So, but getting the speakers right is critical, right? Because that's that conversion from electricity to actual sound, to moving air. And what we've hung our hat on since day one is thin film advanced technologies. Most of you know us for our electrostatic loudspeaker technology, which we've been developing and improving and just taking to the next level for the last 40 years. But in the last you know, couple decades, we've also branched out to other thin film technologies that you're gonna to get to listen to today as well that are very, very close and very competitive to electrostatic loudspeakers with more applications. Don't worry, we're still gonna make the electrostats, okay? A lot of people worry about that when they see the other new stuff, so we are not moving away. But you just have more cool stuff to choose from, which is always a good thing. So let me tell you a little, about, little bit about the Neolith. So have, has, has anyone in the room ever heard these speakers before? Excellent, okay. But there's enough of you that haven't. And this morning doesn't count. <laughs> Yesterday doesn't count. <laughs> you were supposed to hear them yesterday. <laughs> so this is a very special product because I can tell you for the first time in our company's history, when these speakers were designed, these are 30 years in the making. Okay, so as the story as I've been told, because I haven't been with the company that long, um, but we went to our engineers and asked them, okay, can you make the best speaker ever made? Price no object, blank check, however we have two reservations. Reservation number one is the speaker has to be able to fit through a doorway. Makes sense, right? Well, let's just say a common household doorway, because these are home speakers, believe it or not. We didn't design them for this beautiful theater, they're for your house, okay? Reservation number two is we want one single, one piece speaker, not multiple pieces. We want, we want no assembly required, right? For those two channel guys, we want you to be able to take these in, hook them up, and enjoy them immediately without having to, having to worry about extra subs, other things like that. So it is about as pure as a speaker uh, as they come. Um, Adam, where are you at? Could you uh, assist me for a minute? So a lot of people think, well, okay, these things are massive. There's no way the spouse is gonna let these work in my living room. So for a speaker this big, as you can see, it's over six feet tall, I'm 6'2", it's uh, pretty imposing, and it's 385 pounds of raw speaker. So we did something very smart, we put casters on it. So you can just roll it out as needed. Pretty cool, pretty sexy. Or if you are in a more permanent situation, of course, we give you some excellent spikes as well. Actually, I'm just doing this because I want to showcase the whole thing. I'm sure y'all want to see it. I'll look at what's under the hood, right? Okay, so the first highlight uh, of this loudspeaker, it is to date the largest electrostatic panel we have ever built in the history of Martin Logan at any price point. I know a lot of people will say, well, wait, what about the statement E2 from you know, 1998, 1999, which cost, well, adjusted for inflation, nearly twice as much as this. No, even that speaker had a smaller electrostatic panel. Now, the reason why that is so important is because the electrostatic panel behaves like a line source. And a line source has a lot of different advantages over traditional two-way and three-way speakers. And you're about to hear that. Um, so this panel measures 52 inches uh, high by 22 inches wide. That, if you do the math, that should work out to about a little over a thousand square inches of moving diaphragm. And that's for every sound from 20 kilohertz all the way down to 400. That's a very wide range. That's basically most instruments. That's all voices, more or less. So the fact that this entire panel is basically a radiating tweeter and a radiating mid-range and a radiating upper bass driver is what gives it that advantage when you listen to the sound. Because the sound arrives at your ears at precisely all the exact same time. Perfect phase alignment. So for the bass, Martin Logan believes in hybrid electrostatic loudspeakers. The reason why? Well, we like bass. And if you want to get bass out of an electrostatic panel, it's got to be massive. It's got to be even bigger than this to move enough air to create the bass. So what Gail Sanders came up with was a hybrid design where you could integrate a traditional dynamic woofer, which are known for creating awesome bass, right? We all know that, right? Subwoofers are pretty cool. So we integrated a dynamic 12-inch woofer in the front made of carbon fiber. And then if we rotate it to the back, look at 
that back end. Isn't that beautiful? That is a 15-inch aluminum woofer. So this is actually a dual-segment cabinet. The front of the cabinet is completely sealed for the 12-inch woofer. The back, as you can see, is ported for the 15. The 15 is only doing 60 hertz and below. It's hitting that bottom octave. Everything else is being reproduced by the front. If you look at this cool glass piece on the top here, these are my adjustments. I actually have jumpers where I can manually adjust where I want the bass to hit the best in the room as far as distance. Right now it's set at about uh, 15 feet or so. It's hard for a space this big, so we went for 15 feet. And then of course, if you look at this beautiful cabinet, which is in a stunning meteor gray finish, the cabinet itself, how important is a cabinet in a loudspeaker, the actual enclosure? It's pretty important, right? Yeah, so I absolutely agree. And what you don't want a cabinet to do is vibrate. You don't want it to resonate. You don't want it to color the sound. You don't want certain notes to be emphasized when they're not emphasized in the actual recording. So we use the best material, price no object. I think it was um, what Jurassic Park, uh, Hammond said, uh, spare no expense. That's what we did. So the entire body of the speaker is made of a material called phenolic resin polymer. And it is a very heavy and inert material that does not vibrate. So when you listen to this, it's going to sound like a boxless speaker. Well, it is rather boxless because about 80% of the sound is boxless. And what is boxed is extremely non-resonant. That's also why it's 385 pounds. <laughs> so for the crossover section, this is really interesting. So this is another thing that separates an electrostatic speaker, not just the Neolith here, but all of our electrostatic models, is that the benefit of having a panel, a single panel that can pr produce all the frequencies that your tweeter and your mid-range would traditionally reproduce, we have no crossover point whatsoever. There is no crossover for this. The beauty of that is crossovers are kind of a necessary evil, right? I mean, we have to have them in most speakers, otherwise you blow up drivers, right? You don't want to send a bass signal to a tweeter, right? But the problem with crossovers, no matter how good they are, no how expensive the components you use, there's always going to be a loss of signal. We don't like that. We want to hear everything, good and bad, that's in that recording, for better or for worse. So that's a huge advantage that we can, uh, we can deal with. So I know you guys didn't come here to see me. I, I'd like to think so. You came here to listen. So are you guys ready to listen to the Neela? Yeah. Yeah. All right.